Since the return of Barnabas Collins from the past, strange and terrifying events have begun to reshape the lives of those who live in Collinwood. On this night, in a Collinsport antique store, Carolyn Stoddard waits for a mysterious stranger she met earlier, unaware that tragedy is but a moment away. I had no warning. I couldn't see him until it was too late. You'd better see if he's alive. Oh, my God. Barnabas, that's the man who was coming to meet me. the man you met earlier today? Yes. Oh, Carolyn, you must understand. It was an accident. Barnabas, I understand it, but we have to do something. Yes, yes, we must. Yes, he's still alive. We must get him to a hospital immediately. I'll go in and phone for an ambulance. This contains the page of Amanda Harris's handwriting and Olivia Corey's autograph. It's a little late for us to be bothering Stokes, isn't it? No, this kind of thing fascinates him. Uh, he, he said he wanted to start work on it tonight, and he's expecting you. Uh, wait for an answer? No, because he'll want to work on it all day tomorrow, I'm sure. He's a very thorough man. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. I'm at the Collinsport Hospital, and I'd like you to come here as soon as possible. Well, what, what kind of an accident, Carolyn? Who was hurt? It isn't someone you know. I'll tell you all about it when you get here. Julia, please hurry. All right, I'll get there as soon as I can. Does he regain consciousness? No. If he doesn't, I'll never forgive myself. Marcus, you can't blame yourself. Carolyn, Carolyn, tell me what happened. It, it was an automobile accident. It happened just outside the antique shop. The man was coming to meet me. Dr. Green says he has a brain concussion. Who, who's the man? His name is Grant Douglas. He's in this room. I, I want you to look at him. Julia, do you know him? No. 
No, 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 for, for a moment he, he looked familiar. Carolyn, how, how long have you known him? Just since this afternoon. He, he came into the shop and we chatted for about an hour. I thought he was quite charming, so I agreed to meet him when I finished work. Julia, is it going to be all right? I don't know. I'll have to go and see his chart first. Did anyone witness the accident? I heard it from inside the shop, but no one saw it. I thought perhaps Barnabas had witnessed it. I couldn't imagine why else he was here. Barnabas was driving the car. Driving the car? He's terribly upset about it. Yes. Yes, I'm... I, I'm sure he would be. Carolyn, I'll... I'll go find the patient's chart. You... you stay here and, until I come back. Barnabas. Why didn't you call me and tell me? Tell you what? You saw that man. You know who he is. I know he bears a strong resemblance to Quentin Collins. Yes. Resemblance? Barnabas, he is Quentin. I don't care whether he is or not. The man is dying, and I am responsible. And that is the only thing I care about now. Surely you understand that. Yes, I... I do understand that. But I, I don't understand anything else. Unless it's some kind of bizarre coincidence, and I, I don't believe that it is. There is more than coincidence going on here, Barnabas. Much more. I told you I would come to you when it was necessary. You have cared for the child with the devotion and caution that was demanded of you. We have come to love him very much. Now hear me, Megan. The time has come to enter a new phase. We shall do whatever you ask of us. The room will undergo a change. What kind of a change? You will know only when it happens. There shall be new rules and explanations for those who do not believe. You will tell them that Philip's brother is responsible. Philip's brother. 
You and Philip will adjust accordingly. You will keep your love intact. Do you understand? Yes. I understand. In the book, there is much wisdom. It will guide you and comfort you. Go well, Megan. You will awake now. And as before, you will not remember that it is I who gave you the instruction. Where did you go after you left Stokes? I kept calling the cottage all night. I was there. I had the phone shut off. Tell me what's going on. Chris, I know why the spirit of Jenny appeared to you. What do you mean? Come inside. Jenny, Jenny told you to find Quentin Collins. Now you found it. It's impossible. It must seem impossible. Julia, this is a young man. If Quentin Collins were still alive, he'd be very old. Chris, there's no time now to give you any explanations. You just have to take my word for it. You mean to There say is a reason that Quentin, a logical reason that Quentin Collins looks young. This man's identification says he's Quentin Collins? No, the identification says he's someone named Grant Douglas. He lives somewhere in Portland. Did he tell you that? No, he's been in a coma ever since he got here. Don't you think it'd be a good idea to check out the name and address? I wanted to do it last night when I got here, but it was too late to reach the Portland authorities. I'll do it right now. I think I felt sorrier for Barnabas. He felt so guilty, even though it was an accident. Is Mr. Douglas going to be all right? He's still in critical condition, but Dr. Hoffman feels certain he'll recover. She's going to call me here and tell me when I can come and visit. You'll be able to spare me for a few hours, won't you? Of course. Megan, are you upset about something? No, I'm fine. Oh, here's something we shouldn't sell. It's perfect for the baby, don't you think? Megan, you are upset. Has something happened to the baby? No! The baby is all right! What did you find out? There, there is a Grant Douglas. And he does live in Portland. So everything checks out. He isn't Quentin at all. No. No, everything isn't... As simple as that, this, this Mr. Douglas is very mysterious. 
What do you mean? Well, he has no immediate family and no known previous address. Oh, Julian, that doesn't mean a thing. There are no fingerprints on file anywhere. No records of military service. No indication that, that he ever had any job anywhere. You certainly were thorough, weren't you? Yes, Chris. Very thorough indeed. The door was open. I couldn't help but hear the report. And how is the patient this morning? Well, he's... He's still unconscious, but he's resting comfortably. And what are his chances? He will survive. We won't know any more until he comes out of the coma. Well, that's a relief. I won't feel myself again until he's completely recovered. Uh, I take it that you're responsible for bringing Chris here? Yes. Chris, I know that Julia's only trying to help you. But I don't think that you should allow Julia to raise your hopes too high. I don't think I am doing that. Obviously, you've spent a great deal of time making the man identified. But he is not Quentin. I believe he is. You believe only what you want to believe. That's not like you at all. I don't think you should be spending so much energy on a quest that will only bring you disappointment. Oh, Barnabas, your sudden changes of mood lately have made me very skeptical. I don't know what you mean. You were not in the least interested in Chris's problem before. And now all of a sudden, last night, you had a moment of remorse. How do you expect me to behave and react to a tragedy like this? Now you're very concerned about Chris and about me. I'm sorry you feel this way. But I don't like to see people delude themselves like you people have done. Now, Chris, I would like to tell you that this man in this bed is going to bring hopes to you, but he will not. This cannot possibly be Quentin Collins. <laughs> He gets more cheerful every day. He's the one who's deluded. Quentin Collins exists. It's the Barnabas that I that I once knew. Who doesn't? I'll be in the cottage if you need me. Quentin, it, it is you, isn't it? what made you so sad before. Oh, I'm over that now. But life is so strange sometimes. All Philip and I ever wanted was to be happy here. And aren't you? Oh, yes. But we have achieved so much more than happiness. So much more? You look surprised. But I've learned something exists beyond what we call happiness. And someday I, I hope you discover it too. Megan, I've never heard you talk like this before. You haven't known me that long. What's that? What? That sound. It's coming from upstairs. I don't know. Carolyn, we'd better finish this unpacking. Megan, can't you hear it? Yes, I hear it.
There, it stopped. It, it was a ball being bounced. Megan, who does this belong to? Not the baby. There he is. There's my darling now. Thank you.